Hi everybody and welcome! In today's video I'm gonna answer a very important question. How do you become an AI music expert? The first thing that I want to say is that there's really no single path to become an AI music expert. I know a bunch of people, a bunch of friends of mine who are great AI music researchers and engineers who come from very different backgrounds. So uh, my co-founder, for example, at Memo Drive, Andy, is an amazing computer scientist and he's always been interested into music and he's a music producer himself and he found himself doing a PhD in AI music. I come from, I would say, like quite the opposite of the spectrum there. So I'm mainly a musician, classically trained. I studied music, a composition, uh, piano performance and conducting and always I've always been interested into uh, scientific things as well. So I was studying physics and astrophysics and, uh, and I was programming since I was basically like a teen, right? And so for me, like bringing together like these two passions of mine, so music and AI was almost like something that I've always known that I wanted to do because like it's the perfect way, the perfect uh, field uh, like for me. Now, as I said, like different people come from like very different backgrounds, but what I know about AI music researchers is that they all share this curiosity and interest, both for AI and all things technology and music and audio more in general. So these are like the, the, the two main things, the two main factors that you need to have. If you don't have that, well, AI music is probably not for you because this is a very complex field. It requires a lot of study. And unless you love this, you're not gonna make it. You have an interest in music, you have an interest in AI. So you know that AI music is the right thing for you. So how do you become an expert? How do you study AI music? So there are two paths you can take. The one is more formal is going to university. The other one is more informal. It's self-taught. Okay, so let's analyze these two things uh, separately. So university, right? This is like a hot topic and it's kind of like tricky in itself because the reality is that there aren't really many degrees there out there that you can take to become an AI music expert. Definitely that's the case for uh, uh, better degrees. So probably the best thing to do in that case is to go for like a degree like computer science or music technology. But you should keep in mind that you want to do is, for example, if you are uh, majoring in computer science, uh, at the same time doing some research and doing like some self-learning like in music as well. You want to look into music theory, music composition, playing around and uh, producing some music yourself. Same thing if you are like on the other end of the spectrum. So if you're doing music, a music degree, then you want to do some programming, getting yourself familiar with uh, artificial intelligence, for example. So this is uh, particularly important, a bachelor's degree, but when you go like, one step above and if you want to do that so you go to master's degree well things there become a little bit like easier because like there are a bunch of uh, degree master's degrees uh, in different universities across europe and i believe the us as well which are great for ai music and i would suggest you like to look into like some specific universities that i know of that i believe are like really outstanding for ai music so uh, the first one is in the UK and it's called a Queen uh, Mary University of London. So this is an amazing university for AI music. They have a research center that's called the Center for Digital Music. And there they have great professors and researchers uh, who are like studying everything that has to do with music computing, music cognition, and music information retrieval. So it's, it's a really great place uh, like to, to just like study uh, AI music and to start picking up like research in the space as well. Now, the other um, great university, which again is in London that I want to mention is Goldsmiths University. This is 
a great university, especially if you are interested in generative AI. So if you want to do some generative music or generative art more in general, Goldsmiths University is great. Now, if you are more interested into music information retrieval, which is basically more into analysis uh, of like audio and music signals uh, with uh, artificial intelligence and other techniques, you should probably look into a university from Spain. It's called University Pompeu Fabre and it's in Barcelona. So there you have amazing professors and one of whom uh, is Xavier Serra, who's doing incredible research into a bunch of different MIR or music information retrieval um, topics. So some that comes uh, come to mind are automatic tagging or music uh, emotion classification, intelligent uh, AI driven uh, music interfaces and all of these kind of things. So it's really great there. So now if you want to step up like and arrive like at a, at a level where you feel like okay so now i'm mastering like ai music probably you should go for a phd now a phd uh is a great uh path for you if you are really interested into like research and into pushing the boundaries uh, of ai music but at the same time what i've been seeing like in the in the music tech space is that uh, if you have a PhD in AI music, you have a huge advantage over the competition to get a good job at music tech startups, but also like at larger uh, like music tech companies like Spotify or SoundCloud. Now, uh, they also like hire people with master's degree or just or who just have like great experience in AI music. But if you have a PhD, that's going to make like things way easier for you not everyone has the resources nor the willing to go for a formal academic uh, process for picking up AI music. So fortunately, there's also an alternative there and it's basically doing some self-learning. I know this is going to be extremely difficult for many people because you have to be very determined and you have to be like super committed to just pick up so many different subjects and be able like to switch from one thing to another and understand also like how to build your own path. So here I want to suggest a few subjects that I believe are central to become an AI music expert. So let's start from the first one. It's audio digital signal processing or audio DSP. I can't overestimate how important this is. And the reason why that's the case is because at the end of the day, you're dealing with raw audio data most of the time, at least if you're doing music information retrieval. And uh, with audio DSP, you're going to be able to really understand the raw data and understand how to manipulate and edit that data and make the most out of it. Now, you may say, well, but uh, uh, as long as I know like deep learning, machine learning, I really don't need to know much about audio DSP. Well, it turns out that that's really not the case. The, the best uh, AI music researchers who I know are people who know quite a lot about audio DSP. And the reason why is that music is a highly complex construct. And uh, in order to, to to make the most out of your algorithms, you need to understand audio digital signal processing. You need to understand the domain itself. And this happens at the level of like audio, but also like at the level of music from a higher level. So more like semantic music theory kind of level. And we'll see that in a second. Okay, so audio DSP, extremely important. Second thing that you want to know and you want to learn is machine learning. So obviously machine learning like is super fashionable today and rightly so because like it's enabling us like to solve many tasks and that's also true for AI music. So like music genre classification, music emotion detection, uh, auto tagging, all of these kind of things, you can use some machine learning techniques. Now, if you want to 
uh, well, you should learn a couple of things uh, in machine learning. So like the more traditional um, algorithms like super vector machines or linear regression, logistic regression, all of these kind of things. But at the same time, the main thing is learning about deep learning, really. And uh, so deep learning works extremely well with uh, audio and music tasks, like in general. So now if you're interested in learning more and if you haven't followed like this uh, channel so far, so you should go check out my uh, series that's called Deep Learning for Audio with Python. And there like you learn a lot about how to uh, use deep learning like for, uh, for audio applications and things like that. Cool. Okay, so beyond deep learning and machine learning, so what you need to know if you want to be like a very good AI music engineer is traditional AI. And by traditional AI, I mean all of those techniques like evolutionary algorithms, hidden Markov models, or expert-based systems, and uh, yeah, all of these things that are not that fashionable today, but they are very effective at a bunch of different tasks. So uh, I can mention this like uh, as an example. So uh, when we built Melodrive Indie, which is, if you don't know, is an AI music engine that generates uh, music for video games in real time. So we basically like had to decide which way to go. So shall we go directly with deep learning or should we have some kind of like ensemble approach? So using like a bunch of different approaches. Well, it turns out that like, with my research and the research of the other guys at Melodrive, we found out that uh, you can't crack music composition just by using deep learning. So you have to use or rely on other AI techniques, more traditional techniques. And indeed, what came out uh, uh, of our research is that you want to have an ensemble system where you use different modules and need different AI techniques for coping, for managing different uh, music uh, creation, music generation um, tasks, so like harmony or rhythm generation or things like that. So all of this to say that even though it's not that fashionable traditional AI, or as it's, it's used to be called good old fashioned AI, it's very important that you learn about that. Good. So this was a little bit like of a of an overview of a few fields that I believe like are extremely important on the technical side. But now, as I mentioned, it's very important that you have a, a good understanding of the musical side or the domain knowledge itself. And so I suggest you to look into music theory. And by that, I mean looking into harmony, tonality, understanding like scales, understanding how melodies are built together, rhythms, time signatures. So all of these things are going to be extremely helpful for you. And I have to say that most of the good AI music researchers who I know are have like a good understanding of music theory. And that's not a case because again, music is a highly complex endeavor human endeavor and uh, in order like to to make sense of it when we build uh, algorithms that potentially can generate music or can um, extract information from music you need to have uh, some like musical knowledge that the the algorithm knows and the way you can transfer that to to your uh, ai algorithms is by knowing music theory yourself in the first place so, and again, I think like it's, it, it's going to be like useful if I mention this example about Melodrive Indie. So with Melodrive Indie, what we did was basically like dividing up the complexity of music generation into a number of different tasks. And so what we did there was dividing music composition into like its uh, different like modules by using music theory. And also by relying on music theory, we basically built a whole ontology, a domain knowledge that then the generative algorithms can rely on to constrain the generation itself. So 
So all of this to say that music theory is extremely important, both if you are engaged in music generation, but also in music information retrieval, so extracting information from like mood or genre or tags from uh, music signals. Good. Connected to uh, music theory, we have music cognition. And I think like this is another great subject that you should pick up. Obviously, you don't need to become like an expert in music cognition by any means. Uh, but it's important that you know how humans perceive and process music, because that information is going to be instrumental to uh, improve the your algorithms, AI music algorithms. And so before like I, I just like finish off like with this uh, subject, I want to like mention this thing because I, I feel like it's important. So when uh, we hired people, AI music researchers here uh, at Melodrive, so we basically decided to to look at people who had a very strong background in AI for sure, but at the same time who were really good uh, at music or, or who had a good understanding of music theory. And the reason for that is that, as I mentioned, you need to have both things, both the technical side and the more music creative side of things if you want to succeed and become an expert at AI music. Good. Okay, so here I've I've given you like an idea of like the, the formal and informal paths that you can take to become a, an AI music expert. Now, uh, the next step is how do you put that theoretical knowledge into practice? Well, to do that, I suggest you to do AI music projects. So what I would suggest you to do is do an AI music project every couple of months. And by yeah. AI music projects, I mean things like music genre classifier or emotion detection or a generative system that can compose melodies or drum uh, patterns, right? And so if you do that, you're going to get two benefits. So first of all, you're going to uh, put into practice all of your theoretical knowledge that you've uh, previously acquired. And second point is that you're going to build a portfolio. And a portfolio is extremely important if you want to get a job in uh, in AI music or AI more in general, and this has uh, this is something that's like often like overlooked. And again, if I have to choose like a person and hire a person, I would obviously like look at its uh, his or her academic pedigree, look at the publications and all of these things. But I want to look at at things he's built for real because there's a huge difference between uh, the theory and the implementation. And in AI music, this is like really, really the case. Now, okay, so let's say like you've built like this portfolio. So what's the next step? So how do you like step up your game there? Well, I would suggest you going for a an internship and specifically at a music tech startup. So, and I'm talking about a startup here because if you, if you take an internship there, it's highly the case that you may be in charge of full AI music projects, and that's going to be something that may end up being uh, in a production. And as I mentioned, there's a huge difference between like building, like uh, working like on AI music theory stuff, then building your own portfolio, and then like taking that stuff and put it into uh, production. It's a huge uh, difference. So. Doing like an internship in a music tech startup is going to be useful because you're going to learn a lot on the field. And at the same time, you're going to learn how to work in a startup environment and wear s many different hats. The last thing that I want to suggest you doing, and it's something that all of us should do, like if we want to like call ourselves AI music experts, is reading papers in the AI music field. Now, I know that this sounds intimidating because if you open like any MIR uh, paper, there's a lot of math there, a lot of like things that are difficult to grasp. But then again, you have to build like your theory, you have to build your experience in the space until you're at a point where you're going to be kind of comfortable reading like this complex research. The reason reading AI music papers is fundamental is because 
uh, research in the space is kind of like going at a very fast pace, fast pace and you want to be on the cutting edge there and the only way you're going to be on the cutting edge is by reading papers and for doing that I, I want to suggest you a few uh, different fora that you can conferences and journals that you can look at so for all things music information retrieval the main point of reference is called ISMIR which is an annual conference where uh, the, the best MIR music information retrieval engineers and researchers gather and the great thing about uh, ISMIR is that if you go to their website they have uh, all of their conference uh, proceedings for free so you can go there you have hundreds and hundreds of, of articles you can freely read and that's like a great resource like for you to understand where we are at like with research in MIR and at the same time to get familiar with all of this terminology and all of this like new algorithms so if you are more interested in the generative music side of things so there are a couple of resources and uh, I happen to be like uh, one of the founders like for both of these uh, fora and so one is a conference and it's called uh, the conference on computer simulation of uh, musical creativity and uh, this is a uh, again like a, a conference where like the best like people in generative music or people who are interested in generative stuff like in general with music uh, gather and again, there's a website, there's a bunch of websites and there like you can take like and read like the different conference proceedings again for free. And again for free, you have like the other journal of reference for uh, generative music, which is called the Journal of Creative Music Systems. Cool. Okay, so this was it for, uh, yeah, my tri uh, tricks and tips for like becoming a uh, NAR music expert. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm sure you're gonna have like loads and loads of questions. So feel free to, to leave them in the comment section below. And if you have like other ideas or topics that you want me to uh, cover, please like just leave them in the comments. If you're new to this channel and are interested in AI music, please consider subscribing because I'm gonna have videos with like conversations or informal videos like this where I talk about tips and tricks in uh, the AI music and AI audio space. And at the same time, I also have like tutorials and more technical videos. Good, it's all for today. And I guess I'll see you next time. Cheers.